Hey guys, Donnie Sanchez here with IPGRentals.com and today we're going to be talking about what's in this box. All coming up right after this. Hey everyone, if you're looking for a great way to get insight into the media production industry, then check out our other channel, Media Hub. There we talk to industry insiders, including producers, directors, DPs, project managers, makeup artists, editors, and many other talented professionals. It'll give you an inside look to our creative industry, along with the people behind it. So whether you're a seasoned pro or just looking to get your foot in the door, Media Hub will have something for you. You can find Media Hub Shorts on social media or check out our full-length episodes on YouTube. Or you can take us on the go with our podcast. Just click the link and you're there. We'll see you on Media Hub. All right, guys. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the ICANN 3500 teleprompter kit that we have here. This is one of a couple others that we have. Um, we'll share those videos at the end of this one uh, so you can see the variety of uh, teleprompter kits we have for your projects. So th in this case, like I said, everything comes in this case what you need as far as the teleprompter kit goes. The only thing that's not included in this kit, believe it or not, is just the computers. Um, and the reason we do that is because a lot of you guys have your own computers that might have your own teleprompter software. So if you want that, then all you would have to do is rent our computer as well that comes with the teleprompter software. We give that option to you. So uh, we will uh, ship this, or if you come pick it up here at the office, um, this is what you will pick it up in. So just if it's in any car in the back seat, trunk, whatever. And it's very easy. It's not that heavy, believe it or not. All right, so that's that. And I'll just put this right here. Now we're gonna go into what comes in the case. I actually took it out um, already just to explain to you, but check this out. So everything in the case is pretty much built already. So it doesn't really take that much time. I would probably give yourselves, if you know how uh, producers ask you, hey, how long is it gonna take you to, to be ready, ready to go? For this, probably to build, I would probably say 20 to 30 minutes, but then to get all your software and all your editing on your, on your, uh, for your script and everything, give yourself an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, just, just to be safe. You never want to make yourself look bad. So just give yourself ample time. But um, like I said, in the case, this all comes in one piece already, okay? What won't be included is this gold wedge plate because this goes to our tripod here. Um, so you would have to use your wedge plate that goes with your tripod in here. One thing, the other thing I would definitely recommend is make sure that you guys have the correct tripod for the job. So depending on the camera that you're filming on, make sure that the head is big enough to handle the weight of not only your camera, but this tripod. We recommend anywhere from, uh, us, uh, we use Sackler eight, uh, 18s, 20s, 25s. I wouldn't go anything less than the Sackler 18 type of thing like that. Um, I think probably a Manfrotto 507 might even, if you're using like a mid-size camera, or DSLR, something like that would work. So always make sure that you have the right size head that could handle all the weight, all right? So getting into here, the things um, in this one unit are uh, two 15 millimeter long rods here. They're almost like two feet here. Um, your glass that's already installed. You don't have to worry about that. And then you'll have your uh, talent monitor uh, for the teleprompting software that'll be in here that'll reflect onto the glass. All right. This is a 15 inch screen as well, just so you guys know that. That way, if uh, your talent says or whatever production company or your shoot, you need certain type of screens, this is a 15 inch for you. All right, so moving on to the build now. Very, pretty simple. Um, I was gonna do a whole video showing you how to build a DSLR, a midsize, and a full-size camera because that's what this uh, system can handle. It can handle anywhere from DSLR to full-size camera. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go and build the full-size camera because once you see that, the other ones should be much easier for you to, hand, to, to do and to uh, build. So, like I said, um, this will handle anywhere from DSLR. Midsize, midsize would be anywhere from uh, uh, FX6, Komodo, uh, Reds, um, uh, e even, 
I wouldn't say an Alexa Mini. Um, that might be a little, depending on what you have in it, might be a midsize. We'll go with that. Just depends how much other stuff you have on it. With the guys did go out there on their own shoot, and the gentleman did have an Alexa on his with a bunch of other GAC. So I, that's why I don't want to tell you exactly what size, but it does handle all variety of cameras. So besides this piece that comes in it, really the only other piece that comes is, I'm going to call this the, the, I call this the bridge right here. Okay. And this basically slides on to the back of these rods here and is for your camera platform. Okay. Just like that. Now, a couple things you should know before we get into the build as well. Like I said, this system covers anywhere from DSLR, mid-size, full-size, right? So right now, I have this camera platform set for the full-size camera. And the reason you know that is because it is the smaller si size risers, okay? The larger risers are for DSLR builds, okay? If you're filming on a DSLR. And the mid-size are for mid-size cameras. So you'll be able to see the difference in sizes of the risers, okay? These are the short ones, medium, and long. All right, those are pretty much all the contents that come inside that case besides the instructions. But hopefully this video here will, will show you exactly what you need to build. It'll be much easier than just reading the directions. All right, so now let's get into the build. Oh, one more thing about the platform. Sorry about that. If you're using a DSLR, you want to use the side that has the two rubber things in the front facing that way. So it'll, the, these bottom things, you know, it keeps the, the DSLR from sliding. That's how you, if you're using a DSLR, this goes forward. If you're using a mid-size camera or a full-size camera, you want to use the other side that's aiming towards the glass. Okay, that'll be the proper way to do that. One other thing. These come with two quarter 20 screws, okay? If you're using a DSLR, you're gonna unscrew one of these screws and you're gonna put it in the front here for DSLR builds, all right? Right now it's in the middle because we're gonna show you how to build it with a full size camera. All right, so now that I already did that, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna get our plate, right? Now, what we already figured out here in-house, if you're using a full-size camera, just to save you time, which will probably knock off about 10 to 15 minutes, what we notice, any full-size camera, start off by screwing your plate a little bit behind the front post, okay? A little bit behind the front post. Right there, that should give you a good enough start on the proper balance that you're gonna need so that it balances properly on the tripod. All right, so I'm gonna screw this in. All right, so I'm tightening up here, All right? Now, just to let you guys know too, the two uh, quarter 20s come with like these twist, uh, like half circle ring on here to make it easier. And all you wanna do is put it finger tight. And if you have a stubby flathead, that'll help you as well, okay? All right, so now we have it set up just like that, all right? Let me grab our tripod here. And like I said, we usually use a uh, Sackler 25, right? So that's what we got going on here. We're going to put um, our wedge plate and the plate here. Okay, make sure that's nice and sturdy. Now we're locked. We're gonna slide the bridge onto the backside of the two rods. Okay, yeah, so. Right, and right now I have it even kind of like with the back because this mirror has to come up. Right. Let me pan this back towards you guys a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to take our uh, FX9. I have a 20 to a 135 standard uh, Sony lens um, for on the camera. And what I did was I took the viewfinder, I put it back, so obviously it won't 
uh, bump into the glass, and then you can still see your picture um, because it's on the back side. All right. And then I also took the base of the uh, lens and I turned it up so it'll be out of the way as well from hitting on the bottom side of it. So then we're going to clip this in here. Okay, nice and tight, correct. As you can see, that's it right now, right? And then now I'm going to take these two screws here, one on each side. I'm going to raise up the mirror. All right, I'm just going to lower it. And I'm going to take it to right up to where it is about to hit the lens, right? And then I could tweak everything after. Okay, so there you go right there, okay? And then you'll see, right? All I need to do is move it forward a little bit, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen these right here, right? Okay, you see how they're pretty balanced. I just got to go up a little more. There you go. And there you go. Nice and balanced for you, right? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the surrounding black so we can black it all out, right? So it also comes, it'll come with this iCam shade, okay? You have on the back, you have for your lens, and you have your three uh, sections here. The cool thing about this is that all this is magnetic, so it just snaps right onto the frame. Here, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this around here, put this through the lens here, on the back side, right? Have all this come down, and you'll hear it. Let's see if you'll hear it. You hear the magnetic, just grab it, right? And then there's zippers here on the back side. Make sure it grabs it on the side. And let's see, make sure it goes on the side here. One second. I'm going to zip it over here. Boom. On the side. Make sure we're all good. No light leaks, right? And just for your preference, too, it also comes with these extra pieces here if you need them. Like if you're outside, you have the two side pieces. Okay, and there is Velcro right there, so just from the top to the bottom, just like that. This is a back piece. It depends on the, on the size camera that you're using. I think that's why they send it here. That way, if you need to get any other light leaks out, we'll just put it on there just for the purposes of the video, not that we really need it. And then this one goes on the other side. And here's a tip for you guys, if you're outside and you're, and you're dealing with wind or anything like that, you don't want this flapping, just take some gaff tape on you and you can fold these wherever you need to and just gaff it to the bottom of the monitor, all right? And then one last thing, all you have to do um, to power it up, once you have everything going, on the back side here, which you'll see um, where, we, where we show you on how to use the software, on the back side, uh, we go through all the inputs and everything, but there's a power outlet. And that's basically how you're going to power the whole system. All right, guys, so now let's just go into how to use the software that comes with the teleprompter system. And the software that we're using is called the Prompter Pro 4. And what you see is I'm just pulling it up here right now. Let me just expand it here on my desktop. And you'll notice that we already... Uh, imported a script. And by the way, if you know what this goes to, put it in the comments, we'll see who gets it right. But uh, as we go in here, if we look on the left here, you're gonna see importing the file, how to edit your text here on the script, opening the talent window, which we will get into that in a second. 
Here is um, replaying. So if, let's say you're doing a, a run through on the script and you want to tear up and go back to the beginning of here, replay, uh, replay here, it'll bring it up to the top again. And here is uh, rewind. I'm going to show you a couple of features on how you can rewind as well. Um, here it is the invert, inverting the controls. And here is the mirrored. A couple things I want to get into too, which I should have did this in before we even got here. The first thing that you want to do on your computer is right now we're using a Mac. And there's, uh, if those of you are using PCs, what you want to do is you want to set it up as having two displays. So you have to go into your settings and type in or, or select a two display option, not mirrored option. You use two displays. Your first display will be your computer, your work computer, right, that you're going to do all your changes on. And the second display will be your talent monitor right here, okay? A couple other notes. Uh, one of the things that you want to do so you don't fight yourself throughout the day is you want to make sure that you're setting your, your once you set up your displays, you want to set up the resolution and the aspect ratios correctly. So and then when you're sending the, when you're sending the signal to the talent monitor, you don't have to worry about squeezing it in or de-squeezing or trying to get it framed up correctly. Everything will look correct. This monitor here is a 4-3 um, aspect ratio, okay? So you also have to make sure that it's uh, 1280 by 1024. So the signal that you're sending from your computer has to be uh, 1280 by 1024 to look proper on here, okay? Because that's what this program is based on. That is the native part of it, all right? So now let's get into um, getting your, we, what you see on our screen here on our display one on our computer over to the talent monitor. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open a talent window, okay? See it pop up right there? Okay, so now that you see the talent window open, you're gonna go back up into window, right? And you're gonna go where it says, move to BSDHD. Once we click this, it's gonna move it right over here and you see it. But you see that it's not full screen yet, right? So now we have to go back to window here right? And then you're going to click zoom. And boom, it's full screen. Everything's uh, in the correct aspect ratio. There's nothing shooting off or anything. You see it, you see it exactly how you see it on your work computer, right? So as we come back to the, to this portion here, here is where you can start uh, working with your font sizes right here. I'm just going to open up here, right? and you see how it changes. Very simple and easy to use. And now if you look on eyeline options here, you could have it on the left, which is this thing right here, right? So if we go to the right, if this, this is all talent preferences depending on how they want to use it. So, and whatever is more comfortable for them to, to deliver the lines, that's what you want to do, right? So you could even do it on both and you see how it came to both sides on the left and the right, okay? And then here, it depending on how bright they want to see it, right there, and then you could even change the sizing on it. All right, so now let's talk about uh, actually the scrolling process. So all you have to do is click your space bar on your computer and you're gonna see it's scrolling to that speed. Now let's say the talent says, oh, can I get a little faster? What you can do is on your up and down arrows on your keyboard, right? The up arrow, see how it stopped the down arrow I'm just holding it down just so you know. And you see that it's going faster and faster. Now let's say they, let's say they, you get, you find the speed and once you have it, you just let it go. They say slow it down a little more, they let it go. And you know how sometimes speakers are talented, they start ad-libbing their stuff and, and you kind of lose your, your way or their way on the teleprompter. What you want to do, let's say you just got to reverse a little bit. If you press R, it jumps back a couple lines if you see that, right? So here, check it out again, right? Just like that. So all in all, very easy to use software. Can't really go wrong with it. And one thing I, I wanna tell you guys too is that when you rent this system, there's gonna be two options for you to rent it. You could either rent it as a standalone, as a standalone package with just the hardware, right? Or you could rent it as a full package with the computer um, and the whole teleprompting system. 
We do that for you because some of you may have your own teleprompting software, which no problem. You can, this system will work with anything. You're just sending in a signal in. So you can absolutely use whatever computers you want and whatever teleprompting software you want. Or you can get the full system from us. Totally up to you. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember to leave any comments below if you have any questions. We always try to answer every question that comes in. And remember, ipgrentals.com, our gear, your vision.